Coming up on World's Most Extreme Homes, a house in Holland that's anything but run-of-the-mill, a whale of a pad in Mexico City, and a space-aged house in Australia where the neighbours just hop on over. Next. Hello, I'm Ruth England and welcome to the world's most extreme homes. Our first house is in the Netherlands, in the little town of Alkmaar, about 30 miles north of Amsterdam. Now, you might think Holland's all about wooden clogs and tulips, and let's face it, they do have a lot of them. But of course, it's also famous for windmills. Just over 100 years ago, there used to be around 10,000 of them. These days, there's only about 1,100 left. And as well as being national monuments, they are now highly prized real estate. And this one's kind of hard to beat when it comes to the whole form and function thing. The windmill was built in 1769 to grind corn and wheat into flour. More than 200 years later, it's still a working mill. But since this show's not called Extreme Mills, you might have guessed it's also a home to Miller Case Pete. So how long has the windmill been in your family? From 1884. 1884? So I'm the fourth generation who lives here. Gosh, and how long have you lived here? All my life. I was born here. So what part of it is home and what part of it is functional working? The first two floors are living area and the other floors are the working uh, area. Can I go and have a look? Yes, come. Outside it looks, well, like a windmill. But inside, the first two of the six storeys have been transformed into a fantastic home. The first floor is now the family kitchen, but years ago it was where horse-drawn carts came to collect the sacks of flour. So was this kitchen area added by you? No, not by me, by my grandfather. Right. Yes, at that time. Because in the past, the cars with the horses came through the mill. Everywhere in the house is the undeniable sense of history. It's literally right there, under your feet. And these are really quite striking, the, the tiles here. 300 years old. 300 years old? Yeah. And were they here? Where did you get these from? Uh, I looked for months in whole Holland. <laughs> The walls of the windmill are up to three feet thick and it's built in the shape of a cone. This unusual design absorbs the vibrations from the sails and supports the incredible six tons of milling equipment. But curved walls make decorating a challenge. I was just looking at this picture. Is it difficult to hang things? Because the walls are they're uh, coming yes. in, aren't they? Sometimes, because you can see it, it's hanging. Oh yes, there's a big gap there, look at that. <laughs> Have you ever had any accidents? No, no accidents. Above the kitchen on the second floor is this luxurious living room. It's enough to make you forget you're inside a windmill. Also on the second floor, there are three curved bedrooms. And a little nod to modern life that you might recognise from your own home, even if it's not a windmill. Now, I doubt there are very many windmills in the world that have a little fitness centre inside them, but it's not surprising that this one does, because Case is a champion rower, second in the World Championships. And one thing that's surprising about this gym is there is no rowing machine in it. Above the living space, there are four levels of working mill. The mill is now kept working purely for historical reasons. So Case continues the family tradition of grinding corn into flour for anyone who cares to see. Now, obviously, working from home is not an unusual concept, but I just love the way Case goes to work. He steps through this door, and it's like going back a couple of hundred years right into the heart of the flour mill. That's something I have to ask you. Now, here we are in a, a dusty old flour mill, and there is an immaculate red carpet. Do you have any problem with dust? 
Uh, sometimes. Uh, for me it's okay, but I can imagine for someone who's new, uh, yeah, you have to get used to it. <laughs> or get yourself a very good vacuum cleaner. Once you get to the upper levels of the windmill house, you really start to understand why this is a truly extreme home. After the break, we get up close and personal with those 85-foot sails. Time to go. Plus, Mexico City's coolest home, it's shaped like a whale. And then a bachelor pad on stilts. Hope you like spiders. When World's Most Extreme Homes continues. Welcome back to World's Most Extreme Homes. We're checking out Case Pete's house, a very Dutch extreme home. What is this actually used for, this platform? Wind, we can pull on that rope mm -hmm. and then the mill is starting to run. Right, okay, so just pull. Yes. Ah, no. <laughs> oh, wow, gosh. Look, and it's turning. The These gigantic 85 foot sails power the grinding machinery inside the mill. Basically, they're huge. And in high winds, they can reach speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. Imagine that on the side of your home. Wow, they look so powerful. Whoa, don't want to get too close to those. Oh, you can. You can walk between it if you want. Okay, let's give but it a go. You can follow. Right. Oh, my. Oh, oh, that looks so scary. You don't survive it if you're standing there. I don't think I've ever been to such a, a life threatening home before. Oh, I'm going even faster. Yes. Time to go. Yes. If you think you've got a tough commute, try getting around four floors of a working mill. Now there's one normal set of stairs in this mill, and eight of these ladders, and Case goes up them without holding on. At the very top of the building, 60 feet above ground, is the heart of the windmill. Wind power from the sails drives these wheels and cogs, causing the main axle to turn. And I thought I had some interesting stuff in my attic. In case you're wondering where all the workers are, you're looking at them. Case does all the work in the mill on his own. Just him and, of course, his 85-foot sails and grinding stones. And I can smell burning. What's that from? That was the start. The stones are together and there is no corn or flour between it. Right, so should we get some corn in there? <laughs> How much do I push in? Not too much. Not too much. Bit. And that's what we call a truly multi-purpose home, designed for living and making flour. It's elegantly simple and wholly functional. An extreme home that's a piece of living history as well as a much-loved house. You're always connected to the mill. You always feel it, hear it, you're married to it. I was born here and I will be dying here also. Coming up on World's Most Extreme Homes, let your imagination run wild with this oceanic Mexican masterpiece. And later, eco-friendly living in Australia. How easy is it in the middle of the night when you have to get out to go to the bathroom? When World's Most Extreme Homes continues.